this is ridiculous. 99.3 The Truth. You can't handle the truth right now. Ooh. That was the stupidest thing I ever heard. Let's do it. Hit it. It's time for Max World. And here we go. Everybody here. Everybody here. Let's get it started. Let's get it started. Call Matt, 244-0077, or text 809-0993. It's showtime, everybody! Showtime! Exclusively on 99.3 The Truth. It's seven minutes after four o'clock, 407 on the 12th day of September. In the Lord's year 2016, I'm J. Michael McCoy, and it is Monday. And uh, Monday is uh, becoming Theology Monday, I think, because I come in after the weekend, and I just want to share with you uh, some of the things I learned over the weekend at church or listening to sermons or wherever it is. And I, I, the, the, the thing that the pastor preached about yesterday it was Rally Sunday, which I didn't realize. Did you have a Rally Sunday in assemblies when you went to assemblies? A rally? Rally. Did you have <clears throat> Did you? A, a rally weekend must be a Lutheran thing, I guess. It's just a phraseology, Mac. Every, every, every church around this time of the year has what you guys call a Rally Sunday, which is just... Um, the the startup of new uh, Sunday school classes, new programs. Yeah. It's 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 basically back to church school stuff and and all that kind of thing. So everybody calls okay. it different stuff. It's it's not the, the phrasing is just unique, maybe to your place. So one of the things that Luke said yesterday that I thought was just what a great sermon is he made the comment that we start this thing new, this pilgrim journey, and we we bring things with us. And in the Bible verse we had yesterday, which was in Luke, it's the one where he, where Jesus tells him not to bring two tunics. Frank, do you know which one that is? Two coats. Yeah, well, tunics was in our interpretation. Don't you don't need your shoes? You don't need your food? Uh, you I don't sent need? You, yeah, uh, Luke uh, ten or fourteen. Okay. I and, sent you out with bag, script, purse, rock sack, etc. Did yeah. you lack anything? Yeah. And the thing that Luke said in the sermon yesterday that I thought was so good was Jesus limited you. He told you what to bring and what not to bring. He said, don't bring two tunics. Don't bring two coats. Well, the point that was made yesterday that just really made me think, I mean, put my head in my hands and think, is Luke said, what do we bring on these journeys, these pilgrimages that we are on with Jesus, these missions, these seasons, these ministries, these, I don't care whatever you call them, at least for me, I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, my journey with Jesus is in seasons. It's not just a straight line, you know? Sometimes we're going deep into something and we're, we're helping another brother out and it hurts. It hurts. And so, I'm sorry, sometimes we're helping another brother out and we feel great because we're serving, and then we go through our own stuff, and it hurts. I mean, it really, really hurts, and you think, I don't, God told me he wouldn't give me more than I can handle. Well, I don't think I can handle this. Well, the point is, God expects you to step up and handle it. But back to the Bible verse, what Luke brought up yesterday in the sermon was just brilliant, I think. Jesus told us what not to bring. Well, what else shouldn't we bring on our pilgrimage? Shouldn't bring our resentments. We shouldn't bring the hurts from yesterday. We shouldn't hurt. We, we shouldn't bring those things that that we can't forgive ourselves for. And it's interesting. Be, go ahead, Frank. Well, Luke was also mentioning uh, there that uh, the harvest. There's a plenty of harvest, but there's very few workers to collect the harvest and collect the bounty. And so we're supposed to beg. We're supposed to plead. We're supposed to cry out to the lord lord please provide workers to collect workers for the harvest but guess what it isn't going to end up coming back to you because you're supposed to be the first one to say put me in coach all right i have no idea what that meant it sounded like a, uh, a tom hanks movie put me in coach there's no crying in baseball all right bob we've got a text 
that I think is, uh, I, I don't know if Jesus himself texts this, because this is on target with what we're talking about. Well, I didn't change what we're talking about. We're talking about forgiveness and forgiving yourself. And here comes the text at 809-0993, the Service Legends Truth Talk text line. Okay, what can't I forgive? Myself. While I made the usual human youth mistakes, here's what I cannot forgive myself for. I struggled at university for a couple of semesters, went to class randomly, ultimately flunked out. While I wasted time, money, and opportunities, I regret that I lied to my parents about it. I drove home to my parents a couple hours drive and confessed to them. They forgave me immediately. I have asked God to forgive me, release me, but 30 years on, I still cannot forgive myself. All right, so during that break, I went into my office and I grabbed um, a post-it note. It's no accident that Megs came to my office, I don't know, a month ago, and told me something, and I wrote it down on a post-it note. For those of you that know me, I'm held together with post-it notes. And for some reason, it, I mean, I even came into the office this morning and said, look at my desk, because I was gone all last week. Look at my desk. It's covered in post-it notes. I, you know, I looked at it for the first time in a week. But here's one of the ones that were post-it notes. And I'm just going to share this with you. Because, Texter, I love you. It's no accident that you feel this way and that you just text me your question, your feelings, your heart. It's no accident that I said the very same thing to Megs about me three or four weeks ago. I said, Megs, I can't forgive myself for some of the things I've done in my life. I know Jesus has forgiven me, but I just, I just can't bring myself to forgive myself. I just don't think I'm worthy. And this is what he said. If I think I need to forgive myself, I'm standing in for the Savior. If I think I need to forgive myself, then I'm standing in for the Savior, for Jesus. He's already forgiven me. He's already forgiven me. Who am I to stand there and think that I can't forgive my... Jesus already forgave me. Who am I? I must think I'm Jesus. I must think I'm a Savior or a Lord. If I think I need to forgive myself, I'm standing in for the Savior. Here's my point to the texter. Brother, I'm with you. Or maybe, maybe it's a female, I don't know. We're still brothers and sisters. I'm with you. I got some things in my past. I mean, I could just cry right now thinking about some of these things that I did. And most of them, most of the things I did to other people, I've, I've, I've given those to Jesus. I've done my eighth and ninth step. I've asked for forgiveness. I, I have a clear conscience. The stuff I have a hard time with is the stuff I did to myself. Man, I've told you before, I don't think I had a conscience. So I didn't, I didn't know what I do, did. And now, shoot, I can't, I can't forgive myself for making some stupid, stupid decisions that messed me up. Brother, join the club. It's humanness. It's, 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 it's sin. Every lie begins, every sin begins with a lie. And I, the accuser lied to me over and over, as we would say in wild, uh, wild at heart, man, I bought into the agreements. The accuser was telling me, Mac, you're not good enough. Mac, you're lousy. Mac, you're not lovable. Mac, nobody else would love you. Should I go on and on and on? 
and how much that that put a chisel through the heart of my identity with Christ. I had no identity in him. I had identity in you, the world, in flesh. Because if I had this, did this, said that, owned that, it must be a big deal, right? It meant jack to Jesus. So going to school, not going to school, screwing around, whatever you did, Brother, Jesus has forgiven you long ago. The accusers got you stuck on the fact that you don't think you're good enough to forgive. You're amazing. He loves you with everything he's got. Unconditionally, by the way, whether you screwed up in school or not. Why do you push that love away thinking you're not good enough? That you can't deserve forgiveness. The forgiveness you seek in yourself is not the forgiveness of Jesus. Because you've got that. The forgiveness that you can't give up is the forgiveness of the accuser because he can't forgive. And you can't forgive yourself. Just like I couldn't. So thanks for texting in. Love you. I'm going to pray right now for you, Father, whoever, whoever this is, you know who they are, and lay on their heart that they are forgiven, that Jesus has forgiven them so long ago. And the only reason that they can't forgive themselves is because they want the accuser to do it. The accuser can't forgive. Only Jesus can, and he already did. Okay. We're coming back live on the truth. Yep, I told you. It's the truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. 
from the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Uh, 21 minutes after 4, 421. Uh, texture said, Thank you, Mac. You're welcome. I hope it helped. I don't think it was any accident that today we're talking about forgiveness. That Megs came in a couple weeks ago and wrote that down and, and said that because I was struggling with that. And he just very lightly, 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 very just off the cuff, you know, says, <laughs> if I think I need to forgive myself, I'm standing in for the Savior. And if you could hear Meg's voice, you'd know what he said. Anyway, thank you, Texter. Thank you. I appreciated that. If you ever want to get together and pray, let me know. Frank. I would suggest that like Paul, God forgives sin, but he doesn't always forgive the consequences of sin. Paul prayed for something thrice. That's three times. And God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. So a lot of times what God does is he allows the consequences to remain to keep us personally humble. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I've heard you say that before, Frank, and, and uh, that's God. Because I, just... just an add-on there. Uh, many people think it was Paul's eyesight he battled with uh, because he was so blinded by God in the, on the road to Damascus. Damascus, pardon me. And it was such an overwhelming experience that he and he had the scales that had to be dropped off his eyes by Ananias, prayed for, etc. A lot of people speculated it was his vision, and that's why he had to have a lot of people, secretaries, so to speak, to write for him, because I don't believe Paul had the best of eyesight after that experience. And that was to keep him personally humble f- that his people were spiritually blind, because Christ constantly told them, I'm standing before you, I am the light, but yet you say you see. No, spend everything you have and go buy yourself some eye salve, because obviously you can't see. So this was a personal thing that Paul lingered with the consequences of his sin and rebellion, which kept him personally humble all through the rest of his life and ministry. Yeah, I've always uh, uh, um, wondered what the thorn in Paul's side was. I have, uh, I have said on this radio program before, and, and please don't think I'm kidding, because I'm not. And somebody's going to say, well, that's not biblical. Yeah, okay. I don't believe anything that isn't in the Bible. I, I am that way, all four corners. I, I get that. But not everything's in the Bible. You get that, right? There's nothing in the Bible about texting. I, I'm, I'm being a little facetious. But there's a lot of stuff that isn't in the Bible, and I don't know why. But one of the things I can't wait to do when I get to heaven, I think I'm going to have a radio show. I hope I am. A room just like this, probably. Just a normal person room. But the people I'm going to be interviewing are all those people from the Bible. And one of them, I obviously, I'm, I'm going to do an extended version with Paul. Maybe Paul will be my co-host. Oh, Frank, I hope. Well, I know you're going to be in heaven, but <laughs> just forget that you ever did radio. Okay. I, I want to ask the guy who stood in the crowd and went, crucify him, crucify him. And then three days later, watch Jesus rise from the dead. I want to ask him, dude, tell me what that felt like to go from to, oh my heavens, he's God. I want to interview, um, um, trying to think, I just had a brain deal. Um, 61. Isaiah. Isaiah, 61. Where, where did he come up with the clarity to understand that Jesus was coming to heal the brokenhearted and set the captives free? Where did, where did that come from? I want to talk to Daniel about the angel coming to him and saying, your, your, your prayers were answered three weeks ago, but 
I couldn't get here because the devil was holding me up. And what it felt like to be in the lion's den, staring the lions in the face. I just, I, I, I hope God gives me that opportunity. I mean, I, if I understand Revelation, and I'm not a big Revelation guy yet, I need to sit down and study it with somebody for a couple of years. I can't just read it. I need it to be taught to me by a, a, a mentor, a, a, a guide, a, a brilliant person. But if I understand it right, it's going to be just like this, without sin. Right? Our bodies, the bodies we were created for, that Adam and Eve were given, the garden. You know, maybe we're not going to have radio. Maybe we're not going to have cars. Maybe we'll not have anything electronic. Maybe it'll be just us, the animals, the berries, the fruits, the vegetables. I don't know. But even if I don't have a radio show, I want to have this place that I go to. It's like under the Pepsi clock at the state fair. You come to the state fair and you know I'm out there that day. That's where you go. Six and a half hours. I left to pee and to get a pickle. Otherwise, I sat there the whole day and talked to people. Conversation. I love it. I just want to sit there on a bunch of stones in the garden and talk to Isaiah and Peter and John and Mark and Luke and <sighs> David. David. Mm. and Paul, because I want to know what the thorn in his side was. And nobody knows. I listened to a sermon the other day on this station where somebody had done a lot of uh, reading of uh, you know different interpretations of what they thought Paul was, and this was this, and that was that. Nowhere does it say what it was. But it could be what you said, Frank. It could be the scales, his, his eyesight. I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. You can't imagine it. Heaven? Heaven. You can't imagine what's there. It's, 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 it's unfathomable in our sinful state to understand. The, yeah. The, the, I get that. I get that. I understand that. All right. Um... By the way, they, they, um, they got enough money to build the pool downtown. And I, I know there's a lot of people that get some credit here. I mean, you know, the new CEO, Dave Schwartz, we have certainly appreciated everyone's patience as we work through the details of a project of this magnitude. You know, I know that uh, uh, County, Mr. County and Mr. Knapp were called on to go get some money. Uh, the YMCA has received uh, and awarded a million-dollar Vision Iowa grant and a $500,000 grant from Polk City. It also hopes to raise money by selling a parcel adjacent to the Wellmark branch to Hubble Realty, so Hubble stepped up to buy that piece. But I, I hope we do say thanks to David Schwartz. Um, and I'll be honest, I know him. Uh, are we friends? We're sure friendly. I don't know how you define friends anymore. I've, I've never been inside Bob's house, but I, I love him like a brother, and he's one of the best men in my life, but I've never been inside his house. Does that mean we're not friends? I don't know. But Dave and I go to church together. His wife's a friend of mine. And I know what Dave's put into this. I know what he put on the line to take the gig. YMCA CEO is not really a glamorous job. You can't be big and fat like me. You got to be thin. And Dave's thin. But man, you got you to gotta be above. You got to be above all reproach. Which certainly isn't me. And Dave just fit the bill perfectly. So congratulations to the Y and to Jim County and Uncle Bill Knapp. And to you, if you had any part in that. Thank you very much. 515-244-0077, that's the number. You remember what I asked you, the question I asked you when we were going into the break? Chris, do you remember the question I asked? About that, uh, no, now I forgot, because I thought you answered it. What are you repentant of? Yes, yes, that's what it was. No, you didn't answer that one yet. I want to know what you're repentant of, because I got the answer. I mean, I'm, I, I didn't come up with it. Somebody else came up with it. But it's kind of like a rhetorical question. 
It's not a joke. It's a rhetorical question. There really, there really is only one answer of what you're repentant of. But Frank, what are you repentant of? And if you, if you know my answer, don't say it. Um, That's not fair. Well, I'm repentant of unbelief. I'm repentant of hypocrisy. The Sadducees were called the unbelievers. He scolded the Sadducees for being unbelievers, and he scolded the Pharisees for being hypocrites. And I've been guilty of both. Bob, what are you repentant of? Whatever the Holy Spirit reveals to me as sin in my life. And once that revelation takes place, then I repent. Hey, um, Jebediah, are you, are you old enough to have anything to repent of yet? That which is not God's will. Ooh. By the way, do you go to confession? Yes. Okay, because I, I... Can a non-Catholic go to confession? I think so. I'd be interested. I don't know why they couldn't. Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't. That'd be interesting to do sometime, and not as a novelty. I just think, I just think that'd be interesting. You know, there are a lot of uh, anyway. That's a cool. It's a cool thing to do. The Bible encourages you to do that. To confess, confess your sins. The Bible actually says we should confess our sins one to another. It's good. It's Frank. good for us to do it. Well, like Paul, also I ca- I count all things as a loss that uh, I haven't spent in the promoting the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So. There's a lot of things to repent of. Um, my waste of time, my waste of energies, my waste of youth, my waste of money. Chris, what are you repentant of? Oh, nothing, man. I'm good. Okay, Donald Trump. All right. Um, I try not to uh, dwell on the mistakes. I try to move forward and be a positive guy. You know, uh, I'm joking. What am I repentant of? I know your, I know your trick question. I've well, I don't your, mean I've it to be me. a trick question, but you, got, you have to admit this is the best answer. Um, no, I don't, I don't actually think it's the best answer. Really? Mm-hmm. So what do you think, uh, you, if I ask you the question, what are you repentant of? What do you think the best answer is? Um, we should repent of our unbelief, which is similar to your answer in a, in a way. But, um, I think the, uh, the, the greatest sin that we have is that of unbelief. Uh, we, 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 we hear the word of God. God says, thou should have no other gods before me. And we say, nah, but I really like worshiping this thing or I like worshiping this thing. And God says, uh, uh, thou shalt not steal or you shouldn't steal stuff from people. And like, yeah, but I like that thing over there and he's not looking. And if I just take it, mm, you know, see, we don't believe God's word. We don't believe God. We have to repent of our unbelief. If we would b- believe the promises of God, our lives would be a lot better. And that's what Jesus actually called all of us to do. The, the uh, men came to Jesus and they said, what should we do? And he said to believe on the one whom God has sent. Well, along with that unbelief, let's just say coming up here today, you punch somebody in the nose as you was walking up to the studio. You'd also agree that you probably need to repent of some physical harm or something you've done to someone else too. Right? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, in a broad, generic kind of overarching sense. Yeah, I, right. would, I, I would say there's lots of individual things. We so have. what was the best answer? I didn't, I guess I missed it. Well, I'm I'm saying it, yeah. Mac has the best answer. Oh, no, it I wasn't me. I just don't agree with it. It wasn't me. I mean, somebody it's a good one. But did you hear it? Somebody yeah. told oh. this to me. This is not mine. Please, no, I, know. I get no I know. credit for this. No, I know. But I'm saying I know what your answer is. But so somebody walked up to me one time and said, "What are you repentant of?" And as I sat there and milled my way through a list long enough to you know fill a full roll of to- uh, a roll of toilet paper, he stopped me and he said, "You know what I'm repentant of." I'm unre- I am repentant. I am repentant of underestimating God. And that's where my question of can the devil repent comes in. We're going to touch on that again when we come back. Live here in Max World. Yippee. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, High Bee, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Homs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us. 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up 
with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make Make you smile. That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 438, 22 minutes before the top of the hour. Top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News, and then Hank, the vital answer man. one ask hank Frank and I were on the show the same day a couple weeks ago, and neither one of us knew it. Or did you know I was on? No. Yeah, I didn't know you were on until somebody brought it up on the air. All right, Frank, or not Frank, Chris. What? Well, we we were having this conversation at lunch. Yeah, you know why? Because some listener called and complained about me. That's right. So if you're listening and you and you were listening on Friday and you were upset by the silly thing that Max said at the end of the Friday show and you emailed me, I don't remember your name off the top of my head. I don't have my email in front of me, but. I haven't replied to you yet because we're going to talk about it now <laughs> so that I can. Are you crazy about that idea? I, you're, I can, you're not, are you? I, I'm not. But at least I can at least I can help kind of clarify because the listener was. Why don't you tell the listener what? They why don't were. you go read the email that the listener sent so we don't have to question what it was because it was exactly Friday about this time. I was uh, we had the well, no, it wasn't. It it's was the, the last, last two minutes. Yeah, the last two minutes because we had uh the hashtag never Trump on people. And uh, I don't know about Frank loved it. I know Frank loved it. You loved it, didn't you, Frank? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the conversation went on and on and on on Facebook to the point where I had to tell you to be nice today. But the thing that I always talk about is forgiveness. It's, it's, I, I think it's, I think it's my mission from God is to help people forgive. I, I, I don't know. I have no idea yet what it is. I mean, I know, it, I know it's to preach the gospel, you know, and if possible, use words. Um, I know it's that. I know it's to make disciples. I know it's to come alongside men when the feces hits the fan and just nothing makes sense. And I'm just an ordinary guy, but God can use an ordinary guy like me in a huge way. And if he wants to use me that way, he can use me that way. I'm a hypocrite. I'm, I'm, I'm not always honest. I'm a sinful man trying to get better. And he uses that to his advantage. He doesn't help me use it to my advantage. I have no advantage. I have surrendered this life to him. 
fun. It's an amazing life. Amazing life. Did you have your hand up? No. I take it you can't find the email. Not yet. I'm looking for it again. I, I, uh, Did you delete it? I, no, I, I wouldn't have deleted it. But, uh, you know, there's a handful of things that happen around here. Well, it'd be Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah, but it's not. I don't know. My phone. But it's on my phone. It's on my computer in the office. I could go find. But anyway, the gist of the, the, gist of the email was they were upset with you because uh, you said that God should allow the devil to repent. And if the devil would repent, then everything would be fine and everything would be okay. Uh, and I say to you, um, well, um, God allows lots of people to repent, but they don't. Uh, in fact, I, I brought up someone specifically in our, in, in our mutual relation, in our, our lives that we both know, who knows the truth um, and chooses not to repent, yeah. not to turn to Jesus. And I, I could say, why didn't God allow that person to repent? You could ask that same and question. you're saying anyone. he did. What I'm saying is that God has uniquely given uh, all humanity an opportunity to repent. The free gift of salvation is available to all. And it's a very perplexing thing. People don't. I've wondered this most of my life. I've lived my whole life as a Christian. I, I, I was rebellious for a number of years. But I've lived my whole life as a Christian. And I, and I wonder, why is it that people don't choose to follow Christ? They don't choose to follow Jesus. Those well, who have heard the gospel and know the good news. You know what the reason for that? Here's What's my, the reason? I'm just going to take a stab at, let's say, half of them or more. Okay. Because we hurt them. Because we hurt them? It had nothing to do with Jesus. Their church hurt. Their pharisaical hurt. Their Mac hurt. Okay? I, you know, I, 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 I come off as a self-righteous SOB. I, 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 I told them their sin. I, I pulled a Frank and lifted the, the, the law up to them, and, and they decided to shoot the messenger. And so they don't feel worthy. They underestimate God. They think to themselves, I am not lovable to man, to any woman, to my parents, to my children, to my, 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 my. So how could God ever forgive me? How could God ever love me so much that he would pass over my sins and love me enough to bring me home, Frank? Um, well, basically what you're dwelling on is the potential of what is called universalism. And that's the idea that, that uh, is the opposite of eternal torment, um, that God in the end will save everybody. And it's basically, for all intents and purposes, those who believe in universalism hang their hat on one biblical scripture in Second Samuel. Which is? And that says, and King David longed to go to Absalom, for he had been comforted concerning Amnon because he was dead. Meaning that no matter who you are, what you die in, the iniquity you die in, you're going to go to heaven. And I'll remind you of the story of Amnon raped his sister, raped Absalom's sister, raped Amon, Amnon's sister, Tamar. And was a drunkard, died in his sin, and King David longed to go to Absalom because he had been comforted concerning Amnon because he was dead. So people imply in that verse that he was comforted because he knew Amnon was in heaven. And that's absurd to think that a rapist and a drunkard is going to enter into the kingdom. Now, Revelation 21.7 says this. For he that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But cowardly, unbelieving, ab abominable murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So God is clear that drunkards, murderers, etc. can't enter his kingdom. Okay, and by the way, I don't agree with that at all. I, I just think your interpretation of that's horrible, but that, that's all right. I know it's from the of Bible. Of what? Universalism or? Of, uh, of who you say can and can't go to heaven. 
all those things can can be forgiven if they're repented of. Okay. But someone who dies unrepentant of those things. But we're going to die unrepentant of many things, Frank. That's what Father Tattoo said earlier today that's uh, brilliant. Oh, no, Dad's wrong. I'm sorry. Oh, you think the last breath you take, you will have repented for everything you did wrong? If I am in the process of sanctification, my faith in that makes me righteous. Okay. But if I have never entered into sanctification, they're twin sisters. You're justified by grace. You're sanctified to become one with Christ. You cannot become one with Christ if you don't submit to that process. Okay. So I right. may... All right, all right. I'm, it just sometimes your righteousness is just a little too righteous for me. Here's the point to the listener who sent Chris the email that he can't find. And I'm not a universalist. All right, not at all, Frank. I, I think I think that's a, a a religious cheap shot. No, I'm I'm saying that's what the term is called. I'm not saying. I'm just saying that's what the term okay. is. That everybody will be saved, including Satan. If you're if you're repentant of the fact that you underestimate God, I am. Don't you underestimate God? Oh, I'm going to worry about that today because I don't I don't think God can do it. I need to get my I need to get my dander up. I need to yell. I need to scream. I need to threaten. If you do that, that's 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 underestimating God. I mean, I, to my left. Bob Montserrat is one of the most humble, repentant men I've ever met because he has given most of everything in his life to the Lord. Does he live a perfect life? No. Does he have challenges? Oh, yes. Does he deal with them better than most? Mostly me. So what are we going to conclude? Is God limited or not? Can he forgive anyone? We'll talk about that in the last break here on The Truth. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coach with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, hy and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. The family is it on? The Family Research Council is touring the country with their values bus, and they are stopping at Fort Des Moines Church of Christ to highlight the struggle for religious liberty in America. Uh, that's Thursday. That's this Thursday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. 
So that event, the Family Research Council bus tour is stopping here in Des Moines at Fort Des Moines Church of Christ this Thursday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. There will be lots of great speakers there. It's going to be a really cool event. But the reason why I want you to know about it is because that evening, 99.3 FM The Truth will be there to pass out bumper stickers for our station. Uh, and I want to remind everybody that if uh, you put one of these bumper stickers on your car, that's a huge uh, blessing to us and a great way for you to partner in our ministry, as Mac pointed out in last hour. Uh, that's like investing $1,000 in marketing into this station. It's a real benefit to uh, to the station. Um, and, and beyond that, uh, it's a real extension of our ministry. If you've ever been ministered to by the programming, by the content on this station, God spoke to you through the content, um, we want to encourage encourage you to put a sticker on your car because God can use that bumper sticker to let people know that the station exists. They flip over to 99.3 and maybe they too can hear something that God wants to know from them or for them. Uh, So come see me this Thursday night at Fort Des Moines Church of Christ on Army Post Road uh, for the uh, Family Research Council uh, Values Bus Stop and I'll put one of these stickers wherever you want me to on your car. Okay, uh, a little bit before 5 o'clock, uh, Hank, the Bible Answer Man's coming up uh, tomorrow or next. Uh, tomorrow, um, Don DeWay uh, is going to be here with a, a, a pastor who's planting a church in Highland Park. Now, when was the last time you heard anything going on in Highland Park other than being torn down? Highland Park's a great neighborhood. It's a great neighborhood. Love that neighborhood. And somebody decided to go in there and plant a church. And so uh, we're going to talk about it tomorrow. First hour, Tommy will be in. Tommy Coach. Remember last week he did Tom's World? Yeah. Highly rated show. Highly. Overnight, huge success. Oh, we got the book in, and it was just ridiculous. Yeah. Well, Johnny Cash loved it. And so uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about this Hillary thing. I haven't posted anything on politics for I don't know how long on Facebook, but I had to do a cartoon today. And it's the guys uh, from Weekend, Weekend at Bernie's. Bernie's. Remember that movie, Chris? Yes. And they're holding up <laughs> Hillary with sunglasses on. And the caption is, she's fine. She's fine. So I, I have no doubt that'll be a conversation tomorrow. I think it's so sad that she's sick, to be honest with you. I mean, that was really... Uh, the, I think it's just terrible. I don't like seeing anybody in bad health. And she's working hard. She's running around the country right now talking. You know, and when you have pneumonia, that's one of the big things they say is to not talk, to not put a lot of stress on your lungs. Um, and, you know, that's literally what she does is she blows hot air. I mean, she talks uh, for a living. And so, no, I'm uh, all joking aside. It's sad. It's subliminal, man. Yeah. <laughs> but it's sad. I mean, it's really sad, man. Like, I was really bummed out. I saw her and I thought, that's just got to be sad. To be All sick. Right. No so one uh, that. Spencer is going to come in on uh, Wednesday. Man, I got a busy day Wednesday. Starts at 5 a.m. Anyway, um, Spencer's coming in because I'm not giving up on this conversation. Uh, and, and I think what the... What? Okay, go ahead. Didn't you tell me that the listener who called in said something about it isn't in the Bible? Well, it's not. Okay, then you said that. Yeah, I, I said that. It's not in the Bible that, that Satan can, uh, can be forgiven, that he can ask for forgiveness. Right, it's just not a topic of conversation. Okay, not, yeah. so that doesn't mean it's not possible. It just isn't mentioned in the Bible. Well, that and um, his end is spoken of. So of all the people, of all the characters in the, in the universe that have their name mentioned in the Bible, the devil is actually mentioned as being thrown into the lake of fire for all eternity. So like, that's it, kind of a bad, it's a bad sign. Like if it said Chris Roloff is going to be thrown into the lake of fire for all eternity, that's probably what's going to happen. I kind of take the Bible at what it says. So that's probably what's going to happen. Okay, I get it. That's where I was going. Is the Bible or God capable of lying? Not lying. Okay. New International Version, pick your translation, I'll read it. And uh, Revelation 20.10. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had also been thrown. They will be tormented. Okay, now that's a vision that that John had, right? John the the beloved, John the revelator. And, and, And so what everybody's trying to convince me of, if it's not in the Bible, it's not of God. If it's not in the Bible, it's not of God. That's that's what everybody keeps telling me. 
I'm I'm sorry. I'm a new Christian. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to unpack that. You're gonna have to because un- there's nowhere in the Bible that says at age 53, Jesus is gonna come along and mug Mac big time, and everything's gonna change. He's gonna lose everything that's important to him, and he's gonna gain things that he used to look at Christians and say that's just silly. Spiritual warfare? Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Come on. It's not in the Bible that he's going to do that to me. It's 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 not in the Bible that that Princess Di died. It's it's not in the Bible. 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 Now you're going to tell me, oh, you can't just make up stuff because it's not. I'm not making up anything. Jesus came and said, "God forgives through me." Right? Any, 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 but not that one. Or not that sin. You can't tell me that it's not possible for God to forgive the accuser. You can't, you can't, you can't. Except for the, what they just read, Mac. That was a vision John had. Okay, so is it true? It was at the time. John had the vision so it, it could change. So your your position is that the word of God can change. I didn't say the word of God okay, can change. So the word of God says the future talks about what's going to happen to the, the devil. He's going to get thrown in the lake of fire. Right. You're right. not mentioned by name. So that's outside of, of what the scripture speaks yeah, I to. Yeah, I used to think that I, w- I was a mistake. Right. You know, I was, I was conceived out of lust between a married man and a 17-year-old girl. I mean, there, there's no reason for Mac to be here, right? And I'm not in the Bible. Am I? Am I in the Bible? I don't think so. I think I probably am. Yeah. Not by name. Oh, sure. But by heart, by ministry. Frank, eight seconds. What drives people to this potential thought is the idea of a vengeful uh, God who burns people eternally in torment is what drives this. (laughs) Go ahead, finish. It's what drives this opposite end of the spectrum. God forgiving. His number one dude. At one time, it was his number one dude. And the guy finally figures it out and comes forward. And everybody's going to tell me God's limited because it's not in the Bible. But nobody's saying that to you. They're simply telling you what the scripture does say. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, We're not saying God's limited. We're just saying what well, the... But they are. I mean, they're... We're saying, we're saying what the word of God said, what God told uh, John on the island of Patmos. Can I give you a piece of, of good news? Yeah, five seconds. The good news about the sa- Satan being destroyed is that all the wickedness will be put away, that there will be no wickedness in the future, that in heaven there is no evil, Amen. that in heaven there will no longer be wickedness. In the king of wickedness, the devil, he will be ultimately destroyed. That's good news. It's good news that the wicked will be destroyed. Okay, it's Monday. Have you done it yet? I've only been telling you for like six years would you go home tonight and get rid of that resentment you have towards somebody just give it up and forgive because jesus is watching and he'll forgive you as you forgive them see you at hope